Today we're going to spend about 10 minutes talking about uh, the innovation of the upper teeth. Uh, this is a, an adjunct to the other video that talks about the innovation and structure of the palate. So let's get started. The upper teeth. For those who have not uh, done any uh, oral health training or any understanding of teeth, in the human there are eight teeth numbered one through eight. Tooth number one and two are called incisors. Tooth number three is the canine tooth that we all know about. Uh, that's the pointy tooth at the corner of your mouth. Tooth numbers 4 and 5 are your premolars. And some of us will know about those. Uh, if you've had uh, braces on your teeth, sometimes it's quite common to have teeth extracted. And usually with braces, the commonest tooth to be extracted is your 4, which is your first premolar. And the last three teeth in the sequence are 6, 7 and 8 which are called your molars and they are fundamentally for grinding your tooth, your food up. And you will all know about your eighth tooth, that is called your wisdom tooth and it's very common now for teenagers to have their wisdom teeth extracted. So the upper teeth fall into this sequence of one to eight and they run around the arch of the palate. So let's draw ourselves a palate. like this. And let's just draw in one quadrant or half the number of teeth for now. Here's the one, here's the two. We'll draw a big sort of triangular tooth to remind us that that's the canine, the third tooth. There's the fourth tooth, a premolar, the fifth tooth which is a premolar, then the first of the big molars, six, seven, and our last tooth, the wisdom tooth at the back, the eight. Now obviously this extends down the other side, but for the sake of brevity we won't draw that in today. Um, <coughs> just to remind you, in the palate video we talked about the innovation of the palate that comes from fundamentally two places, the long sphenopalatine nerve and uh, our friend the greater palatine nerve these nerves supply the palatal mucosa and gingiva uh, adjacent to all of the upper teeth. Do remember that these nerves, the long sphenopalatine, oops, Daisy, P for palatine nerve, and the greater palatine nerve, they are all going back to the trigeminal nerve. In fact, the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and just as I said to remind you they supply they supply the mucosa of the palate they supply the gingiva of the teeth on the palatal side just write a P there to remind you that it's only the palatal surface and all, importantly too they supply the periodontal ligament that surround the, all the teeth on the palatal surface. So that's just some revision. So now let's talk about the teeth themselves and what nerves supply these teeth. Again, the nerves we're going to talk about come from their branches of the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. And really what we can do is break the mouth into sort of third regions. So we can have an anterior third, sort of a middle third. So we have one third across here from the midline to around the three region, one third from about the three region around to the six region, and one third from the six region around to the eight region. And when we talk, let's just draw the midline in here so we know that where we are about. Clearly this is again reflected on the other side. And when we talk about each of these third regions, we're talking about the innovation of the mucosa 
on the buccal side. We are talking about the innervation of the gingiva on the buccal side. We are talking the innervation of the periodontal ligament on the buccal side. And, most importantly, we are talking about the innervation of the pulp. So that's, uh, that's slightly different to what we saw for the greater and lesser palatine nerves. You can see the key addition here is the pulp. The pulp of the teeth is supplied from in these three regions in these three regions by branches of the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve that come from the buccal surface. Now each of these regions have a separate branch of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve that supplies them. And the naming is rather simple. Obviously this is the most anterior third this is the middle third, and this is the posterior third. So the branches names reflect these thirds. So let's just write them out now. We have the anterior, superior, it's the upper jaw, alveolar, remember that the bone, we'll just go back up here for a minute, the bone underlying these teeth and the teeth are embedded in all this bone in here is called alveolar bone. It's a part of the maxilla, isn't it? All of this bone around the teeth here, let's just draw some of it in around this tooth. We'll put a little arrow there to remind us. So all of this is called the alveolar bone. So it makes logical sense that the nerves are named about with the bone name, anterior superior alveolar nerve, and we shorten that, we write it anterior superior alveolar nerve. Then we have the logical extension, middle superior alveolar nerve, and lastly, posterior superior alveolar nerve. Middle superior alveolar nerve and posterior superior alveolar nerve. So now you can see on our diagram that the th thirds of the arch, mucosa, gingiva, PDL and pulp, is supplied by these three branches of the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. The anterior superior alveolar nerve, the middle superior alveolar nerve, and the posterior superior alveolar nerve. There's one other interesting fact about these nerves. Remembering that they all come from the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. The posterior superior alveolar nerve is a direct branch It comes from the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve in a little area, and this is for later discussion, but a little area called the pterygopalatine fossa, or PPF, where the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve starts its break up into all its branches after it comes from the middle cranial fossa. So the posterior superior alveolar nerve is a direct branch from it. Whereas, whereas the middle and anterior are sub-branches anterior superior alveolar nerve and the middle superior alveolar nerve are sub-branches of a major branch of V2, the trigeminal nerve maxillary division. And that major branch is called the infraorbital nerve. 
So there are only, there's only a slight variation here that you can see in the arrangement. And remember, if we wanted to do this in the reverse direction, the anterior superior alveolar nerve supplies the 1, 2 and 3. That's the two incisors and the canine. The middle superior alveolar nerve supplies the 3, 4, 5 and 6. That's the canine and the two premolars and part of the 6. And the posterior superior alveolar nerve supplies the 6, 7 and 8. That is the molar teeth. And the first thing you'll notice when you looked at this is that there is actually crossover. That the 6 shares supply from the middle and posterior and the 3 shares supply from the anterior and middle. They are just the boundary points. When you go back to our diagram here, they are just the boundary points between where the thirds are dividing. So now that you have this, uh, this picture of the innovation of the mucosa, the gingiva, the PDL and the pulps of the upper teeth, let's just spend five minutes having a think about how this uh, impacts on the way that you give local anaesthetic for teeth. So let's just redraw our diagram again here. Let's draw our palette. Whoops, not such a symmetric palette this time. We'll draw our teeth. One, two, our triangular big one at the corner of the mouth, the third or the canine, the two premolars, four and five, the first molar, six, seven, and our wisdom tooth at the back, eight. So let's now have a think. We now know we've got three three nerves, anterior superior alveolar nerve, middle superior alveolar nerve, posterior superior alveolar nerve that supply sort of the buckle and the pulp. We'll call it buckle and pulp. And we know that the long sphenopalatine nerve, oh, I keep doing that, don't I? Palatine nerve and the greater palatine nerve supplies the palatal but not not the pulp. The pulp is supplied by these buccal derived branches. So now it becomes an easy story, doesn't it? If I was to say you were going to be doing some work on, say, a uh, upper four, let's say you were going to extract that tooth, what tissues would you need to, to take pain sensation away? Well, you would need to do both the buccal and the palatal because obviously as you pull a tooth out, you're going to tear the tissues to the palatal and the buccal. So getting back to this four, let's assume we're going to extract this tooth here. The first local anaesthetic you'd need to give is actually injected immediately adjacent to the tooth on the buccal side because the solution, this connective tissue around here, is loose connective tissue. And the bone on this side is very thin. So that means when you inject the local anaesthetic solution, it can spread out in the tissues, it can get through the bone, and it can affect the nerves that supply the buccal mucosa and the pulp of the tooth. But that's not enough because you've got to remember that we are going to extract this tooth so we are going to cause some damage to this area of the gingiva around the tooth and the periodontal ligament. So if that's the case we also have to block the greater palatine nerve. And if you go back to your uh, uh, back to the lecture on uh, the hard palate, you'll understand that I've put this cross slightly behind the tooth and about midway between 
the teeth and the midline of the palate. That is the core point that you give this local anaesthetic. So the reality here is, what nerve would you be blocking? Well, you would be blocking on this side the greater palatine nerve, and on this side you would be blocking the middle superior alveolar nerve. Shall we do the same exercise and think about if you were doing a filling on an upper seven? Let's just imagine you were doing a filling on this tooth. What local anaesthetic would you need to give? Well, the first and obvious thing is you're going to need to do exactly the same story again. Inject immediately adjacent to the tooth into the buccal sulcus area where the connective tissue is loose and the bone is thin and you would be blocking the posterior superior alveolar nerve. And similarly, well no, hang on a tick, when you're doing a filling are you going to be doing any trauma to the gingiva on the palatal side? Now that answer depends, doesn't it? If you were doing a very large filling and it was going subgingively and you were going to put a great big um, matrix band on it, then maybe you would. But if you were just doing a little tiny filling on the top surface of the tooth, then you wouldn't have to worry about this gingiva here. So the second local anaesthetic injection, in the case of a filling, is um, optional depending on what you're doing. But again the same principle would apply a wee bit behind the tooth and midway between the teeth and the midline of the palate where the softest part of the palate is is where you would give a little solution. So in summary this is the innovation story for the upper teeth. Thank you.